come. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Whether it's morning or afternoon or evening, um, God is good. Thank you for joining us. I am Colleen McFarland. I'm the pastor at Union First Collinsville Presbyterian Church, and it is good to be with you today. Um, a couple of announcements. Uh, our session continues to explore uh, ways to worship together. We have purchased some new equipment and we hope to get it installed and working. Um, we're kind of at the, well, let's say we're waiting shipping on that. Um, we have purchased a transmitter and we are hoping that we can do a parking lot church of some sort. We're not sure of all the details yet. We are hoping to get that installed and ready to go for Pentecost. Um, and that would be good. If that happens, we will be sure to let you know. Hopefully by now you've received a letter. A session asked me to share a pastoral letter with you all. So uh, just sort of telling you what's been going on in your absence. Um, the way we do church has changed momentarily. Um, and we just want to keep you informed of, of all that's going on. And as always, I need to thank you. The session wants to thank you for your continued uh, support of the church. You're a blessing to us and you're a blessing to God and the kingdom in this place. So thank you. Would you join me in our call to worship? This is adapted from Psalm 66. The Lord says, I will extend peace like a river. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. See, the Lord is coming with fire and the sword to execute judgment on all people. Those who survive because of their faithfulness will be sent to the nations. They will proclaim God's glory and bring all people to the temple of the Lord. Let us pray. Loving God, whom we draw breath, Help us to always choose the way of life. Help us to keep the commands of Jesus and to follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord, to be witness to you in our lives. Forgive us when we fail or turn away from your ways to please the selfish part of us. We need your grace and your forgiveness. Do not forsake us, O oh Lord. Amen. Friends, God forgives, God restores, and he strengthens us through his son, the risen Christ. In the name of Jesus, we are all forgiven. Praise be to God. Our scripture for today comes from John chapter 14, verses 15 through 31. Um, I'm reading from the NIV version. Um, so hear the word of the Lord. If you love me, keep my commands. I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and I will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us, but not to the world? Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. 
Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say I am going away and I'm coming back. If you loved me, you would be glad that I'm going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens so that when it does happen, you will realize. You will believe, excuse me. I will not say much more to you for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me, but he comes so that the world may learn that I love the father and do exactly what my father has commanded me. Come now, let us leave. A sense the reading of our word. Well, our friend is back children would listen in. This is Jeffrey. He joined us last week and he is back this week. Someone asked me this week about Jeffrey. Jeffrey is a small giraffe and he he's come to to be with us for worship. He's young and, you know, my children, he likes to play with stickers. Does anyone else like to play with stickers? And I don't know if you can see, I'm going to walk over here close because Jeffrey did something kind of silly. Jeffrey has stickers on his eyes. He thought it would be fun to have blue eyes. So he put stickers where his eyes should be. Silly giraffe. And just for the record, it's not good to put things in her eyes. So Jeffrey, although he thinks it's fun, he can't see. He's got things over his eyes. Hmm. Well, I'm going to sit him back on his little stool and we're going to talk about seeing but not seeing in John's gospel. So let me put him back. Sometimes he doesn't sit very well, but there he is. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for all of our young worshipers, even those young at heart. Pray that you would help them to see you and to know you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, this is the largest section of teaching on the Holy Spirit in all of the Gospels. And for that reason alone, it is very significant. This is Jesus teaching us about the Holy Spirit. Now, John's gospel has several themes in it, and one of them is seeing. Seeing meaning understanding. Do you understand what you hear? Do you see it? Do you understand? From John 1, we learned that Jesus came into the world before it was formed. From John 3, we learned that he came to save the world, not to condemn the world. We know that God loves the world, but he does not love the sin that is in the world. Sin is the problem. Jesus is the solution. And Jesus knows that. At this point in his life, he knows that it is not much longer before he faces death. So he's preparing the disciples for what lies ahead. His death and resurrection is going to shock them to the very core of who they are. But they have a big part to play in the Father's world, and they need to get it. They're going to need everything that he can teach them, but they are going to struggle with it. 
The help that Jesus is promising goes by many names. The advocate, the helper, the counselor, spirit of God, Holy Spirit, or friend, as Eugene Peterson translates, will come and remain with the disciples until they too join Jesus and the Father in glory. But the helper can only come from the Father once Jesus is physically present with the Father and absent with the disciples. So it benefits the disciples if Jesus goes away. Peterson refers to the Holy Spirit as friend or spirit of truth. And those are very accurate descriptions. This third person of the Trinity is not well known or um, celebrated, if I can use that word, in our mainline denominations. We say we believe in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, but we often leave off dealing with him. Maybe we fear too much emotionalism, like some of our more Pentecostal friends. Or maybe we're afraid of getting lost in the weeds theologically and not finding our way back. But Jesus is saying that the advocate will greatly benefit the disciples. So I think we need to understand as much as we can. I refer to the Holy Spirit as him, not it. I do not believe the Holy Spirit is male as Jesus is, but believe the Holy Spirit has more status than an it. Made of the same substance as God the Father and Jesus the Son, the Holy Spirit is divine. He's God. He's part of the Trinity. He's not some unidentifiable entity. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13 that we see only dimly, that we don't understand fully a lot of the mystery that we are dealing with. This was explored several years ago in a book and later made into a movie entitled The Shack. Now, the author chose to portray God as a woman, the Son as a male, and the Holy Spirit was also portrayed as female. Some people had very strong feelings about this, but the truth is we don't know. But what it did was show that some of us have our minds very set on this is how it is and everybody else is wrong. Now, I, I did not agree with everything that the author portrayed in that book, but he wasn't making a theological statement. He was dealing with his own stuff. But what the book did was made me think. Now, in verse 16, it tells us that the Father is the one to send the Holy Spirit. We believe that he also sent us the Son, and the Holy Spirit is just another benefit from the Father for us. Also, in verses 16 and 17, the advocate, according to Jesus, will help, will be with us, will teach us all things, will remind us of Jesus' teachings, and sometimes we need to be reminded because life gets crazy or or we get so caught up in what's happening in our lives or the lives of those around us that we forget that the Holy Spirit works with us, in us, and abides in us so that we do not feel like orphans. Mentioned in verse 18. He is God with us. Or if it makes more sense to you, he is Jesus with you while Jesus is physically separate from us. The Holy Spirit is meant to be an encourager to us, not our own personal cheerleader, per se, but someone to encourage us in our daily walk with God, to help us to follow the truth of God's word and apply it every day. 
Through the actions of the Holy Spirit guiding and leading us, we are then called to do our part to change the world. We know that the world is crazy and it is sometimes a very scary place. Evil is real and it exists all around us. Evil will use people, places, and things to create havoc, to steal the peace that the Son gives us through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Our call as Christians is to use the unique gifts that God has given each of us to share the hope and the love that was found in Jesus. That is our testimony to, to a living God in an anxious and hopeless world. We are Easter people. We are loved and blessed so that we can love and bless others. We do that. We find peace that cannot be shaken despite the circumstances around us. Jesus said that the one who loves him would keep his commands. And according to him, that meant to love him, to love others, and to serve them. We can't walk around with stickers on our eyes like silly Jeffrey. Believing that we can see. If we're serious about being Christ followers, then we need to serve and love. Or flip it around, love and serve. The Spirit is here with us, guiding us along the way. We'll mess up. We're human. It's okay. He stays close to us. He loves us. But if we continue on with him, if we listen, he will guide us through life. We are not promised that it's going to be easy. But we are never left alone to deal with whatever is going on. The Holy Spirit is always with us, encouraging us, lifting us up, giving us peace when there's chaos all around us. If that is true, and I believe it to be true, how can we lose? Or maybe a better way of saying it is, we have nothing to lose. Praise God. Let us pray. Holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, hear our prayer. We do not always understand how this works, and sometimes it discourages us from even trying. But by the presence of the Holy Spirit, God, you lead us and you guide us to take one more step, to make a phone call, to reach out. And when we do, we are blessed. And sometimes you use us in ways that we never understand. Your truth is right there within us. Your peace covers us and strengthens us. Lord, we pray for our world that is filled with hurt, anger, confusion, sin, greed, and so much evil that we sometimes become greatly discouraged. Lord, we pray for our world, for the people and in places who make a difference in small and large ways. We pray for the people who are helpers, teachers, healers, servers, givers, and peacekeepers. Protect them and strengthen them. Be with those who are sick and carry heavy burdens or those who are struggling with addiction and those who need help. Lord, we remember um, Stacy's mom, Judy, and their family, Jerry and Phyllis, Jess and Dawn, 
And Lord, all those who are sick and who are battling this virus and those who maybe are very quiet, but who have deep needs. Be with people who are leaders, help them to make good and godly decisions, regardless if they sit in a high government office or are leading a family. Help churches to speak the truth and to love and to serve you and their community. Be with our pastor nominating committee as they do their work and bless them. Prepare the pastor that you have for this flock. We are so blessed. And we thank you for all that you have provided for us, especially the helper, the Holy Spirit. We close now with the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Go now and serve God. May Jesus Christ, the way and the truth and the life be with you. And may the Holy Spirit empower you to serve in Christ's name. May God, who raised Christ from the dead, keep you now and forevermore. Be blessed in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>